Welcome everybody back to the gaming table. Today what we're going to do is create a character using the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition rules. I don't anticipate this to be anything different than any other character creation video you've seen except what I'm going to do this time is just use the book, paper, and dice. I see a lot of folks when they do a character creation video they use uh, digital character sheets and things like that in the digital book but I thought, you know, let's just try the old-fashioned way, just to show you it's really not that intimidating for, like, face-to-face -face type of gaming. And the character sheet I'm using I got off of the drive through RPG website. This was put up by Cubicle 7. It's their printer-friendly version. So there's really not a whole lot here. And then we've got the dice that come with the starter set, and then, of course, the book. And what we'll do is I've decided I'm just going to go with the random results and as we play maybe just share what I like or dislike about the system as far as some of the experience I've had now playing it but it should just mostly be you know creating a character uh, now first thing we're going to do is just follow through the steps and that step one is roll for species so I'm just going to roll the percentile here Oh, I didn't have my little dice tower handy, but we'll just roll here in the book. 55. So that's a human. Now, the human table goes 0 to 90. It's very difficult to get one of the other species on just a roll. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Human. Now, with rolling, the reason why I like rolling is just to get an interesting character. And then you get extra experience points that you can spend later. Uh, this isn't that huge, but it does give me... 20 experience that I'll put over here in the um, current section Ugh, character sheet that way you can you know follow along there but what if I put the sheet there you can see now I'm zoomed out obviously so you can't see everything that I'm writing uh, I apologize but we'll try to explain everything as much as possible plus it's in pencil so now I see why people did it on the computer with a digital all right uh, yeah, so you can get Halfling, Dwarf, High Elf, Wood Elf, but you've got to roll a lot higher than a 90 to get those. Alright, uh, we're not going to worry about reading the human descriptions and how they feel about other people, so we're just going to move along. So we've got a human character. Then what I'm going to do is roll for the career. Yeah, that's the tough one. Uh, depending on the flavor of your game, it's difficult sometimes to say you end up with like a peasant or something like that but then that creates for those epic moments where you advance your character past being a peasant into something greater or you might start out as a noble who knows you know we'll see so again I'm gonna randomly roll and that is a two well that'll be easy to find uh, over here on the human section a two is an engineer cool alright so we're gonna write down class uh, class academics and career is an engineer which you can't see me write at all so this is actually turning out maybe to be a terrible format for this so yeah you know all right and then uh, career level is one because we start off as a first level of whatever it is that we're doing so what we'll do is after I create we'll just zoom the camera in on just the paper and kind of look at what we've done all right, so now we've got an engineer. Okay, cool. We'll learn more about engineers as we go along. Now we've got our career that we've chosen. Oh, and because we rolled for that, we get 50 experience points. Now, again, if you're not familiar with this, you can randomly roll and you get bonus experience points. Then they have an option. It's like if you roll and then modify the roll a little bit, you get some experience points. But if you pick what you want, you don't get any experience points. And similar with your race, well I think race you just have the option to pick what you want or roll and then stats you can roll and you get bonus experience points if you just keep the roll if you move them around you get some experience points and if you use a point by system you don't get any experience points so that's one reason I chose random roll, I like that bonus experience so I can kind of fine craft the character as we go along and since I rolled for the career and I'm not going to do the, it says you could roll twice more and that would give you three to choose from, but I'm just going to simply pick the one here. So, Engineer, that will bring my current experience up to 70. Uh, okay, so we're good there. 
then attributes. And like I mentioned earlier, we're just going to roll. So human, luckily, is easy because it's going to be right along here, the characteristics box of the character sheet. And in the book, it's just all 2 die 10 plus 20. Uh, so we'll just see if I roll well. Now, this is a percentile. And of course, I'm zoomed out when rolling, so you can't quite see the percentile, but you just count both as 10s. Uh, so that's 6 and 2 is 8. Uh, so weapon skill is 28, which, you know, might not be too bad for an engineer. Uh, 6 and 8 is 14, right? So that would be a 34 ballistic skill. 2 and 2, so 24 strength. That's not looking good at all. Toughness 6 and 5, 11, so 31 toughness. Initiative 8 and 2 is 10, so 30 initiative. 9 and 9 is 18, so 38 agility. Nice. Uh, 8 for uh, dexterity, so that's a 28. Okay, intelligence, be smart, be smart. 17, so that's a 37. Smart enough. Willpower, 9 and 8. It, oh, oh, that's a 9. 9 and 8 um, is 17. Okay, so again, that's 37. And finally, Fellowship, 11, so 31. Well, a couple stinker stats in there. Strength at 24 might be a bit of a hindrance as far as encumbrance, but being a human engineer, we can just make a device to carry all our stuff. Not quite how engineering works, but we now have stats. And again, because I ruled for my stats, I'm going to get an extra 50 experience points. That leaves me... 120 that I can later spend to maybe change my career to a different academic if I wanted. Right now I'm an engineer. We're happy. Or I could do an adventure, try to live, and then maybe get enough experience I could just swap to something completely different. It's hard to say. Now we do have wounds. On the back here, wounds are pretty much calculated the same for everyone. And on the back of this particular character sheet, it's nice because it says right here, uh, SB. So I take my strength bonus, which is terrible. Uh, so that's two. Then I take my toughness bonus times two. My toughness is uh, three. Toughness bonus. So that's six. Thank you, toughness. Willpower bonus. Uh, my willpower is, I, again, it's 37. So that's a three. I don't have the hardy talent. Hardy talent gives you some extra hit points to start with. So I'm starting the game with 11 wounds, which I'm not going to say is great. Uh, if I can bump strength up a couple points here in a moment, that will help. That will give me an extra hit point. I've seen at 12 is really kind of around the average hit points, which doesn't seem like much. But, you know, we'll take what we can get because it really isn't much. All right. Uh, then we got Fate, Fortune. Oh, well, my movement for a human, I thought they said was four. That's, i got to write that in here from the rest of this chart. Okay, so first of all, my fate is two. That's on the front of this sheet. Fate points are two, which gives me two fortune. And then I have one resilience, which is, gives me one resolve. And then I have three extra points. I, most people, I say most people, like I've only really played this with a couple people but the folks I played with that played human they just split their bonus points so they gave themselves uh, let's see here what was it two yeah four four fate four resolve four resilience and four resolve or I said fate and fortune so four fate four fortune so just four that's pretty good though human gets pretty good amount there fate nobody else starts with fate then I get four movement, and that was, I think, movement was on the back. I saw movement somewhere. Movement. Yeah, right here. Movement, four. And there was a chart to talk about your walk. So if your movement was four, walk is eight, 16 is run. In case you need those later down the road for combat, things of that nature. Uh, tra overland travel. 
All right, uh, now it goes right here. You gotta watch out because there's a little tiny paragraph that says here, advanced characteristics. So after you read about fate, resilience, fortune, things like that. Now there is one here for determining motivation. I don't really have a sense of the character, so I don't really have a sense of motivation or what drives them yet. So some of these things, when we make new characters, we kind of come back and revisit. So for now though, I'm just gonna look at my advanced characteristics. So this little blurb, look to the advanced scheme and find the three characteristics marked without a brass, silver, or gold background. All right, so that's what I gotta do is go find engineer. Uh, what I need is a little bookmark so I can just flip to that real quick. Oh, here's a little tiny bookmark. It's probably not much. Not a good bookmark, but Maybe I can remember that. All right, so for an engineer, ballistic skill is one of my basic stats. What I do is I just circle the stat just to make a remembery of what I need. Later, if I did play with this person at all, I would just print out the character sheet. Well, print out this character description so I have everything that I need. So for now though, just to give you a brief what engineer? Engineers design and build mechanical devices or structures such as bridges, canals, or fortifications. Most are educated dwarfs at the high, oh, hidebound dwarf engineers guild. Humans at forward-thinking establishments such as the Imperial Engineers School at Altdorf. Those self-taught prodigies are not unknown. Uh, yeah, like I don't know. Probably probably went to a school. So we make stuff, which is cool. Uh, what I'm looking right here. So my title is the career path is student engineer and it is brass four there's three levels of like your hierarchy status in the in the game so there's brass silver gold brass is the lowest rung that's where a lot of peasants and things like that are uh, silver is just the next nudge up, so it's like your middle class, a lot of merchants, things like that. And then gold is the highest, and that's for some nobility. So what's nice is, with academics, you might start with brass. Uh, so even though you start at the lowest end of the food chain, if you will, you can advance to gold, which is, which is great if you stay in that career long enough. And that would give you some social standing you know, within the game. Um, even though you're starting at brass four at the same time, role play wise, since an engineer being an academic, that still might give you some some status opportunities versus if you were a peasant at brass at the same kind of thing. So it, it's not too bad off being an engineer as far as your status. Now as far as what can you contribute to say combat, that's going to be completely different. Just as a weapon fighter with my ballistic skill being the one that I can advance, would probably want to have an arquebus because I think right there trappings a book hammer and spikes oh I don't I don't start with any weapon but you know perhaps maybe there's something I could get that I would use my ballistic a bow or something like that now but not much of a combat class is what I'm saying there okay so we've got to do allocate five advances across these characteristics all right so my ballistic skill was 34 Dex is 28, intelligence is 37. Oh, so what I'm going to do is, since intelligence and dex are close to the next up, what I'm going to do is actually just raise those with five points. And those aren't advances. Those are, well, I guess it is an advancement. Yeah, those are advancements. Okay, so uh, what did I have here? I had 28, and I think that one was 37 as well. So I'm just going to put two advances there and three advances right there and that will automatically kind of bump those up so good because dex that'll put that one at 30 and that puts my intelligence at 40 so I can think my way out of a problem I not be able to fight my way out of a problem but we can think about it at least then we're gonna talk about some skills now first you're gonna read into your species skills and talents here so being a human there's some things that you start with already and then uh, dwarves start with some things, halflings, high elves, wood elves. And that's kind of like you're, you're growing up in that society. Later on, all your skill advancements are going to come off of your career. But as a human, 
Reichlander specifically, I do get Animal Care. Now this is, I'm, I'm also marking these just temporarily. Um, animal Care is, mm, I have Charm Animal. So Animal Care looks like that might be an advanced skill. So what I'm going to do is just stick it over here. I might not keep, I'm just writing it there for now because I know that's a species thing. Um, and then we get cool. So put a little mark by cool. Eva well, charm. I, mean, I can't miss charm. Put a little mark. Evaluate. Evaluate. Well, gossip is there, so that's one. I'll take gossip. Evaluate. Then there's haggle. Haggle, haggle, haggle. That would be good for an engineer, I think. Uh, then there's language. You can get language, Bretonian language, wastelander. I don't think I'm going to worry about getting an extra language. M you know, maybe role playing wise, I'd probably want Bretonian, but you know, we'll just stick with what we got. Uh, leadership. There's lore for Reichland. Uh, you know, we will take that. Lore. That way, if there's checks about local history or whatever, that gives me a chance there. Melee basic. Yes, that's a human one there. Ranged bow. I will take ranged bow. Yeah, so I'm going to put it over here under advanced. Ranged bow. Since I got a good ballistic skill compared to my melee skill. Although I probably will, if I have a chance, put... Uh, get two points in weapon skill just to make it an even 30. Now, talents. Uh, those are fun. I'm just going to put doomed. Doomed is... It sounds bad. and It's kind of bad, but I guess because humans really kind of suck at a lot of stuff as far as bonuses racially wise and whatnot. Uh, so they gave this to humans. If, if you and the dungeon master or game master can come up with a way that your character will die and your character dies in that fashion-ish, then your next character you roll up gets like half the experience that this character had. So it kind of gives you a boost on your next run through. Yeah, cool. Then there's savvy or suave. And then I get three random talents being a human. Uh, and I don't remember, now it's savvy or suave, not both. So what I'm gonna do is pop over to talents and just take up a look here. These are skills. So just a quick look at what savvy is. Savvy. Savvy, you gain a permanent plus five bonus to your starting intelligence characteristic. Okay, and then I think suave then was to your uh, fellowship. Suave, where is that at? A lot of S's, but suave, it's hiding. You get a permanent plus five bonus to your starting fellowship characteristic. Yeah, and it does not count towards your advances, and neither does savvy. Um, fellowship is 31, intelligence already is 40. I'm going to go ahead and, and take suave. So we'll take suave as a talent. Plus five fellowship. And so I'll just put my fellowship current down here at 36. And I'll have, you know, just remember I took suave. So 36 here on the current number that you, I look through the camera screen, it's like, yeah, you probably can't see that at all. But again, we'll zoom in at the end and like kind of look at all the numbers. All right, so we took doomed. We have suave to help with fellowship. Three random talents on the three random talents table. First, I get a 44. Four. Now, if you duplicate, you get to re-roll. So I get, I get Mimic as a talent. Apparently, as a kid, I like to mimic the instructors of the academy. That's always useful. 92, very resilient. Very resilient. Okay. And then finally, last, one, acute sense. Any one. I want an acute sense of... Hearing, yes. Acute sense of hearing. 
cute sense. Hearing. I got terrible penmanship. So zooming in so you can see the sheet isn't going to be a good idea either because my penmanship is terrible. I just want to take a look at what the uh, very resilient is so I know what that does. That's in here somewhere. Very strong, very resilient. You gain a permanent plus five bonus to your starting toughness. Ooh, that's great. Plus five tough. That's good because my toughness was 31. It is now 36, which is great. Add some advances to that and boom, we're set. Uh, that'll give me some more hit points, like two more hit points because it doubles your toughness bonus. So I got four more, which is a lot of experience points, by the way. So I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, okay, so we did that. Random talents, then career skills and talents. Oh, what I did forget to do is I wrote down the, the made marks next to my skills and then I went right to the talents because I was picking my list and my talents. So before I move on, I want to make sure I spend here. because It says that with e a species and skills, I marked down what my species skills were. You get, three you get three skills to gain five advances and then three skills to gain three advances uh, each. So... Uh, I'm going to take ranged bow and give that five advances. And ranged bow, I'd have to look, but I think that is, is my ballistic skill. So I have a spot here where you can write like BS for ballistic skill. And then that is 34. And then the skill total would be 39. Which... You know, isn't that good? Uh, when you're trying to roll under that all the time to hit, yeah, I rolled a 50 even. It you, it causes a lot of misses, so I'm going to have to really think about how to craft. Okay, so that's one with five advances. Then we had like charm, cool, gossip, haggle. Haggle, I'm going to give that five advances. And that's fellowship, which is a 36 currently. So that's 41 in the haggle department. Great. Oh, melee basic. Uh, I need melee basic because I, in case I can't get a bow or ballistic thing that I'm trained really well in, I want to make sure that I, you know, can possibly do something. So that would give me a 33 skill in that. Again, pretty low, but I'm going to raise weapon skill, I think, at some point when I can get some advances in there. And since that wasn't one of my basic characteristics for my class, I couldn't put any points in it, in the weapon skill. That's all right. Then I get to pick three skills that get three advances. I do like evaluate, and I'll have to look the corresponding characteristic for that. So I'm going to put three in, in evaluate. Uh, I'm going to put three in, in gossip. Now, the reason I'm choosing gossip is in some, some of the adventures, there are actually sections where you can check gossip, you go to the tavern, you want to hear what's going on local news, make a gossip check. So it won't hurt to put some advances in that, just to maybe slightly boost your chance of success. Although because it is on a percentile die, it feels like you have to put a lot of advances in something to make it feel like it's worth the time. But it's a 39 now versus 36, and because you are rolling percentile, every little point will help. All right, so that's two of those that I got three in. Let's take cool. So we're going to put three advances in that, and my willpower was a 37. So that makes that a 40. All right, now that being said, I'm going to erase these little marks because you only get to buy into your racial stuff once as far as putting the free advances. Uh, so I don't need that anymore. So I got my advances done. I've got my uh, talents picked out. Then you get some trappings. I'm going to flip it over here. Academics, I get some clothing. Uh, we, we'll look up well, I don't know if I'll do that all on camera, but 
Uh, all of this has encumbrance unless you're wearing it. So clothing I'll probably be wearing, so it might not have encumbrance. Dagger might be one encumbrance. Could be zero. I'll look it up later. But I got a dagger. That fits in perfect with my uh, weapon skill that I just trained up. I have a pouch. Ooh, a sling bag. Oh, sling. I was thinking sling, but it's a sling bag containing a writing kit. So I'm going to put a sling bag kind of in its own line and then a writing kit. I guess so I can write down stuff. And one die 10 sheets of parchment. So here's a one die 10 roll. Uh, you probably can't read that at this range from the camera. So I'll just bring that up to you, which you can't see in the darkness because the lamps don't cover up here, but a zero. So I, I get 10 sheets of paper, y'all. Parchment. 10. Yes, uh, and that's very important because again, if I'm gonna use my writing kit, I need something to write on. Great, that's what you get for the class trapping. Now the career itself is gonna give you a couple of things. So let me try to flip this out to engineer. So right here I've got trappings. I get a book, parentheses engineer. I also get Hammer and spikes. It doesn't say how many, so I'm going to just assume it's an unlimited amount. So once I decide to start hammering stuff, I'm going to town. This would be perfect for dungeoneering, because I can use my intelligence to design ways to cross obstacles and then construct them. Perfect, perfect dungeoneering class. Now that's my career and class trappings. We're gonna check my money. Since I do start out as brass, I get two die 10 brass pennies per status level. And since I have, uh, what is it, brass five? Brass four, I get to roll that essentially four times. Uh, so two die 10, so that's 17. <sighs> Math is tough. And then uh, 18. Oh, I'm gonna, let me make sure that's right. Yep. I'm going to be rich. And then 6. And then 8 and 7 is 15. Okay, I'm going to do some quick math here. 11, 19, 26. Carry the 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. 56 brass. So over here, the D is brass. Uh, I was reading a couple things about the money, where it's like it's like 220 or 240, somewhere in there, I, I have it handy. I think it's 240 brass coins equal one gold coin, and then like 120 for a, to equal a shilling or something like that. It's a very odd money system. And then they use an abbreviation of like D for the brass, and then the S is silver shillings, the GC is a gold crown. But anyway, I was reading that it's complicated on purpose and sounds weird because you have money from all the different corners of the realms that nobody has a, a communal money system. So everything is just goofy and wonky. So if the money doesn't make sense, it wasn't designed to make sense is what I read somewhere on like a Reddit or something. I was like, well, that, I'll go with that. So I've got my starting money that I can use to buy stuff if I want. And then adding detail. Then you can get into like names. They have sample names. If you were like an elf, you could roll and get an elf name. So I'm going to name this guy because he's human. I'm going to name him Hans. Uh, Richterfin. So Hans Richterfin of the Richterfins of Altdorf uh, is going to the Altdorf Engineering School. He has a little bit of money in his pocket. Uh, animal care. I'm going to erase. I kept that one. You know what? I talked about Lore Reichlander and I didn't even put anything in it. So I'm going to erase it because that was a racial thing there from the beginning. 
Uh, yeah, nothing really special about old Hans Richter Finn. Just one of your... I misspelled his name. Richter Finn. Uh, yeah, just a normal run-of-the-mill Reichlander guy out there building engineering stuff. Now, we're going to do uh, some physical characteristics here. Age. Human. Oh, human is 15 plus. Die 10. He is 17 years old. Wow. Just a young guy in the city all alone with his many, many friends and partying. His height is 10, 11, so 4, 9, 4, 9, 5, 10. Uh, no, it would be because it's 12, so 3, subtract the 3 from 11 is 8. So he's like 5, 8. Oh, okay. I'm taller than him. Cool. Five foot eight inches, I think, if I did math right. Then eye color. Yes, let's let's check his eye color. It's two die ten, so it's a ten. So his eye color for a Reichland human, pale gray. Pale gray eyes look out from beneath his cloak as he wraps it tight to keep him warm against the blowing winds of Reichland weather. A seven for hair color. Golden brown wisps of hair billow out from beneath his pulled over hooded cloak. Golden brown. All right. That's the important stuff. Now they have some additional things which are fleshing out your character development. So there's like ambitions. What kind of ambition you have? Short term, long term ambitions. Short term might be. I want to finish reading my engineer book. I had a spot for ambitions here on the sheet. I th yeah, right here, short term. Uh, finish, here we go. Yeah, we'll put finish reading the engineer book. Now, we could write that into the story as something humorous, as every time they stop somewhere, he's reading the book. Uh, then the dungeon master, whoever that may be, we would come up with ideas for how long it would actually take to finish reading the book. And that might go hand in hand with possibly graduation. You could also assume that he is graduated. Maybe he graduated early and he was given this book as a gift. You know, again, that's all backstory fun stuff. Long-term goal might be to write his own book. Own book of engineering. So he wants to be a famous engineer. So he's going to read this guy's book or gal and then write his own book. And you get experience points for completing those ambitions. Now, there's also party ambitions. So if you wanted to come up with your group, uh, this is something that I hadn't really seen before until like third edition Warhammer where they actually had like a little card where it had like party disposition, party goal kind of a thing. You could be bandits, heroes, and they had a bunch. It was a kind of a clever way to kind of group it together. And then as you played, you got certain benefits for your card. Well, with this, you know, which I have seen in other games, this kind of gives you an idea to kind of bring that idea forward so you can set short-term party ambitions, long-term party ambitions, and again, it kind of gives you something that you can focus and build your group around. That way, it's more than just we met at a tavern. However, that being said, you may have met everybody at a tavern, and now you're adventuring together for some common goal, which you could put in your ambitions. Currently, don't have a party, so I'm not going to worry about party ambitions. Then there's bringing your character life. It's got 10 questions. Where are you from? What is your family like? What is your childhood like? Why did you leave home? Who are your best friends? What is your greatest desire? What are your best and worst memories? What are your religious beliefs? To whom or what are you loyal? Why are you adventuring? I hope that's 10. Now, if I was with a party, this, this is always kind of a fun time that everybody comes together. You share your character ideas. You share how everything kind of overlaps with one another and how you fit into the world. You know, not just the party, but into the world as well. And it is important to figure out how you fit into the party because you need to start deciding what roles people will play. Now, when I say that, uh, that is some of the mentality I bring over from like Dungeons and Dragons kind of a thing, like who's the tank, who's a DPSer, 
With this, the game is not quite the murder hobo dungeon crawl type of experience, and so you might not have those same kind of role niches to fill. But you kind of do. Uh, combat, because combat is so vicious on folks, sometimes I feel like when, when we're playing or when I was making characters, we were trying to figure out who was going to fulfill what role in terms of combat. And that might be completely wrong for Warhammer, because again, Warhammer is a new experience for me. I love the, the game itself, the mechanics, but finding that right sense of flavor for story to make it, because someone said it's almost like a Cthulhu in the Dark Ages kind of a thing, um, with a healthy dose of bar brawls. All right, well, cool. But I want to be a good bar brawler, so I might want to be the DPS or the bar brawl. I don't know. Anyway, so once you've kind of developed that with your character, the last thing, and it really is the last thing to do, well, I always say that, but uh, after that is finalizing equipment. But really the last thing to do then is to spend some of your experience points that you have earned. Like I saved up 120. I can now spend that on improvements. Now, because my character gave me a ballistic skill, dex, and intelligence as uh, class skills, if you build outside of that, everything costs double. So if you build outside of what your class allows, the experience advancements cost double. So for example, if I wanted those two advancements in weapon skill to bring me to a nice even 30, that's going to be, because uh, I have no advances in it, 25 experience per advance. Double that to 50. So if I want to just put those two points of weapon skill to give me an even 30, that's a hundred experience points. That's, on one hand, you know, seems good because that weapon skill, since that's the basis for other more specific skills, it's good to raise your base skill. But if I really was concerned about my melee fighting, it might be cheaper just to raise the skill itself. But then you're only affecting that one skill. Whereas strength or the weapon skill itself, you know, is a basis for multiple skills. So you got choices to make. How do you spend that? Plus, there's a hundred experience points per talent that you can buy. Uh, then you have talents again on your your class description that you can purchase. Those are a hundred experience points, and then it's a hundred experience per time the talent has already been taken. So uh, some of these you can buy multiple times. So if I bought it. You know, once it's a hundred. If I'm going to buy it a second time, that's a hundred for the first level I bought already, and then a hundred to to bump it up. Uh, I would say one one thing I read somewhere again. This this came from from Reddit. Was some folks were saying that if you're going to max out a career, that's going to take a lot of experience points. A lot. You'll be adventuring that one class forever. Now, when I spoke to a guy who was telling me about the game at Origins, uh, really had a really good British accent, so I was sold on everything he said. But he said that's the point. Uh, previous editions, I guess it was fairly easy to advance and move from class to class, but they had a sense of being locked, locked in, like there was only so much advancement you could do. You had limits, so you were encouraged to move from class to class. And not everyone likes that. And so what they did was they said they, they created a system to where if you like being a guard or a warrior priest or an engineer and you want to be there forever, you can. So there's no real limits on purchasing things like your skill advancements, things like that. So the classes here do kind of support the idea that you could just be this engineer for your entire adventuring life. So yes, some of these things will take a lot of experience, but they designed it that way on purpose. So having not played previous editions, I can't say if that's a good thing necessarily or a bad thing, but when I play, say, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, you're kind of that class, your whole adventuring career anyway, and then that takes thousands of experience points to move up in levels. So that's not an a unusual concept for me. Uh, maybe someone who is used to being able to have more flexibility in changing classes that might be a hindrance to your, your, your play style or what you remember from previous editions. So again, that's just uh, you know a couple ideas I've heard towards this. It's great if you like the idea of being able to stay one place forever, 
but maybe not so cool if you're trying to build up to a certain degree and then transfer out. It's very expensive experience point wise. Okay, well having said all of that, this right here is improving my basic characteristics. Now you do get a certain amount of advancements for free, uh, which allows you to put points into your basic career and you get like one talent for free. Now that's important because uh, with that, it would allow you to take your 100 experience points and maybe promote yourself up within your career. And I think I did miss out on that. I think that was right back here. I think I was reading ahead too fast and I didn't properly spin. Yeah, it's right here. So under the random talents, career skills and talents. So it says here, you begin at the first career level listed under your career path. There are eight skills, four talents listed. And you can choose which of these you are most proficient at. Allocate 40 advances to your eight starting skills with no more than 10 advances allocated to any single skill. This is enough for you to add five advances to every career skill if you wish, which is one of the required steps to complete your career. And then you get one talent. And so that will allow you to advance. So I, I did forget that. I'm glad we talked about that and you reminded me. So thank you for reminding me. What I would do now is I'm going to mark what skills are for this guy. So he's got consume alcohol. I'll put a little dash. And cool. And endurance. Little check mark noises. Check mark noise. Language classical. And I'm going to put that over here. Lang class as an abbreviation because I could buy it and that's permanent. Lore, engineer, perception, boom. ranged, black powder. My penmanship looks really terrible. I'm gonna put down there, black powder. Uh, and trade, engineer so I can buy into those if I want so I'm going to get five advances to those career ones so that was language uh, class classical I put class for short oh yeah I did get evaluate right no I didn't that was what I took okay lower engine I'm putting a little dashes so I remember trade and I dash those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, because what I'm going to do is put those five advances. That means I get this is going to go to eight. Consume alcohol gets five. Very important for a college student. Five in perception. One, two, three, five in endurance. Got to stay up all night studying. Language classical gets five. Lore engineering gets five. Ranged black powder gets five. Trade engineer gets five. And then uh, over here with my talents, artistic gunner, read, write, tinker. Now, without remembering those, I think my wife made an engineer. And she did take Tinker. I'm going to read Tinker. Then there's Gunner. But I'm going to read Tinker first. Because that's like that's the one you can use to build stuff. Yeah, Dexterity Bonus. Oh, the maximum times I can take it is, is equal to my Dexterity Bonus. Trade tests to repair broken items. You are somewhat of a Johan <laughs> of all trades. Able to repair almost anything. You count all non-magical trade skills as basic when repairing broken items. Don't know how often we'll find broken items, but you know you could uh, read, write. That's an important talent. Which role playing ish e? I think I'll take read, write. Artistic would be good too. But as I'm envisioning the character, read. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Memory tells me that it's. Any language you can speak, you can read write if you take read write. But I'm gonna tell or look here because I might only be able to read write one. 
Uh, you are one of the rare literate individuals in the old world. You are assumed to be able to read and write, if appropriate, all of the languages you can speak. Great. So if I do buy more languages, I'll be able to read and write. So right now I can read and write common, whatever, Reichlander, wherever, I, wherever I'm from. Perfect. So that's my basics for that, and then my talent. And then, then the last thing would be buying extra advances. Uh, what, I, what I think I'll do though, because I have 120, the first 100 I'm going to do is promote myself to Engineer Silver 2. Now, so here's the thing, and I didn't see this in the rule book, and I think I mentioned this once before in an earlier Warhammer um, video. It doesn't tell me if I get the trappings when I promote. So I'm going to go to Engineer Silver 2. I didn't see that anywhere. My assumption is sure, because I'm at, I'm at school, and I'm putting my experience into training and being there and whatnot, that my guild, school, college, whatever you would uh, belong to as far as your profession, they say to you, yeah, here you go. Here's the trappings for your class. So that's what I'll do. I'll take the trappings. So I'm going to spend that 100 experience points to move up to engineer uh, level 2 right there. So I'm no longer going to be a student. Now you could role playingly say like um, I graduated and I am just now an engineer and I am now silver 2. So I have a job somewhere which is again something you could create with your dungeon master, game master person. Now with that, I increase the number of skills that I can, I can buy from. Uh, talents though, I'm only limited to buying these talents here, which is bad now that I think about it because I don't get to buy gunner or artistic or tinker. So if I wanted those talents specifically, I gotta pay extra experience or demote myself back down and then buy them at a cheaper rate. So over time, I might just I might just stick it out here at Engineer Silver 2. Yeah, it probably wasn't smart to promote this early on, but you know, I did. But that does add for me drive and dodge navigation and ranged engineering ranged uh, research and then I have uh, where was it language of the gilder I'm going to put lang and then parentheses so whatever gilder is I can read write in gilder as well as speak it and it gives me a guild license under my trappings. So I have graduated school. I'm going to join a guild of some sorts and trade tools. Great. Let the dungeoneering begin. That leaves me with 20 experience points to advance things. That's not much. That isn't much at all. So I'm just going to go back here. Oh, there's advanced tables for later down the road, but here initially, I think it's probably the same. Um, yeah, I've only got 20, 20 left. Skills at zero to five advancements. Since most of these are five, I was going to cost 15 just to raise something one point, unless I grab one of my that I only had three advances in. Gossip, per well, perceptions at five. Evaluate. Uh, you know what? I think I cheated earlier, and I put one of these... Oh, you know what? I did cheat. I put one of my ones that had to be uh, advancement of five. I must have wrote it down. Three, three. Yeah, I did. See, you all can't see my paper zoomed in to tell me that I cheated on something. Uh, so one of these should have only had a three instead of five. And I forget what my initial racial skills were. So I 
think to compensate for that, I'm going to drop... Uh, which one were racial? See, I deleted them all. Or I erased the little mark I made. Mm. I think I think I had... Let me go back and look here. I just noticed I was looking for my other three because I had three that got three advances. Either I didn't advance it or I advanced the wrong thing. Because we had animal care, charm, cool, charm, cool, I put points in. Ah, no, cool, cool had the three and then I added five from a later advancement. So, uh, cool. So if I wanted to, well, gossip is not one that I do now. Evaluate isn't one that I do now. I'm just trying to see what I can do with those 20 points. So what I might do, I'll just hold on to the 20 points, and then I can use that later down the road. Um, depending on how you work things with your game master, you might be able to spend it as soon as you come across something you want to do, do it fail, and then spend some experience to improve it. Or... Uh, you might say, okay, well, now that I've thought about my character and before I've gone out, I've spent some of that experience points to develop this. Or just hold on to it until you actually complete your adventure and then you've got 20 that I'm carrying over and I'll be able to add that. So you don't have to spend it all now. I'd say it says here, finished. The only other thing that I would do with this character is go back to trappings, get my encumbrance, and see how heavy all that is. A lot of that I could say I'm wearing, and that reduces encumbrance by a point. I don't have any psychology issues, corruption, no armor. The weapon would be the dagger, so we would fill that out. So really at this point, the overall character concept is there. I didn't actually increase toughness or strength, so I didn't get any more hit points out of this guy. So he's got 11 hit points. Uh, but he is an actual engineer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the book. I mean, so hopefully that, that isn't too overly complicated. I know, I know some people look at new games, think they're kind of complicated, but this isn't. And there's a lot of cool questions you can ask yourself about your character. Now, we're going to zoom in, but the problem is by zooming in, you probably still can't see my pencil marks very well. Yeah, because I got terrible penmanship. All right, so just quickly, Hans Richterfin in the name. He's an engineer, human Academics is the class. His career is the engineer. His career path is now engineer because he's a level two career path. His status is silver. Oh, I forgot to write the number down. I'll delete that up. It's like silver two. Um, and I didn't give myself any money for that promotion. That's fine. I gave myself the trappings, but I didn't go back to the, the money part and give myself money. I, that might be a little overdoing it. Uh, 17 years old at at 17 years old, one of the youngest people to be promoted up into the guild. He's 5'8 with golden brown hair and pale gray eyes that stare at you from beneath his cloak. Characteristics, 28 weapon skill, 34 ballistic skill, 24 strength, 31 toughness, uh, initiative 30. Well, I guess toughness of 36 there because he had his very, resi very resi yeah, resilient. Uh, 30 dexterity, 40 intelligence, so a very, very smart individual. Fellowship 36, charming as well. Fate of 4, fortune 4, resilience 4, resolve 4. 20 experience points left to spend somewhere down the road. Movement of 4, standard for humans. He's got some cool of 40. I didn't add in all of the bonuses here, so I consume alcohol, toughness bonus is well his toughness is 31 so it'd be a 36. I'm not going to go over every single skill because that would just be crazy but he did put some points in consume alcohol had some advances for his endurance put some points in gossip and haggle so he's a very social person uh, melee basic uh, not not so good at the fighting but maybe enough to scare someone away perceptions five he does much better with ranged weapons I think ranged bow yeah, 39. So at some point, maybe get him a bow. Uh, let's see, he's got his classical language, evaluate, lore of engineering, ranged bow, ranged black powder, trade engineer, ranged engineer weapon, so he makes siege weapon, well, fire siege weapons, some research, and he speaks the Gilder language. Talents were Doom, Suave, Mimic, which I didn't even look that one up to see what it was. Let me move the paper up here. 
So we didn't look up Mimic. Very resilient was the, the bonus to toughness. Suave was his fellowship bonus. Acute sense of hearing, and he can read write. And he's reading a book, and he's going to write his own. And then we added in some trappings. His clothing, dagger pouch, sling bag, writing kit. His ten parchment pieces. Uh, he's got his engineer book. Hammer and spikes, guild license, trade tools. Dagger, which I think was very close for the group for Stabby. Encumbrance, like I said, I think is like one. It's either a zero or one. Oh, the range was very close. And then group is basic. I think it's melee basic. I'd have to look that up, but I think it's a melee basic group. Damage is like strength bonus plus two. I'm going off of memory, but I would, I'm going to look those up later, like I said. And then quality, you would look. Some of your weapons might have quality, like piercing or, you know, uh, defense or parry or something like that. Uh, dagger doesn't have too much. Hit points, strength bonus of two, toughness bonus of six, willpower bonus three. So we ended up with 11 hit points. Uh, so honestly, just that first first chapter of the book with a few steps, it's not difficult to make a character in this at all. The only thing is you gotta be careful is as, this, as your characteristics change or your advances, that will change a lot of corresponding things that are affected by that, the underlying core. Uh, so your character might change quite a bit throughout a game if you get like conditions, po poisons, and temporary losses and things like that. But it, it, again, in practice, it's not a complicated game to play and track. Most everything I do is going to be rolling under the skill. Now at least with basic skills, if I don't have the skill trained with advances, I can still roll the characteristic. But the advanced skills, I can't do any of these unless I've actually purchased them, which I didn't actually purchase these yet. <laughs> I didn't put points in them, I, I was going to say. I can put points in them later because they're part of my class, but I did not actually put points in them now, which maybe I would because I might want to speak Gilder or Trade Engineer or have some experience uh, shooting black powder weapons. But that's the basics right there. I hope that kind of gives you an idea what it's like with uh, the pen and paper experience sitting around the table. I don't think it's any more complicated or more so than if you were playing with, through like Roll20 or some kind of virtual tabletop. But I know some folks, they prefer the digital, but if you're just doing pen and paper, it's, it's not that much more difficult to make a character and write it all down. Just get you one of those character sheets off of like drive-through RPG and you're set. They're free. So check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for checking this out. And we'll see you another time. Bye.